This is exactly what the gift of help is. The gift of helps in the church helps the fivefold ministry and other ministries to stabilize the church so that the church will function. So, some of these gifts of helps are like ushering. The preacher cannot do ushering. The ushering department is part of the gift of helps in the church. The music department is part. There are other places like cleaners, counselors, administrators, people who look after instruments, people who are ranchers. All these people are ministries of help to make the church function. If you are in the church, ask yourself, which of these ministries are you functioning in the church? Children's service. If you go to children's service, it's a whole department. There are people there who work to make sure the children are taken from the parents and taught the word of God and all those things. If you are in the church and you are not happy in any way, I'm sad for you. It means you don't understand Christianity. It means you don't understand. It's just like you are in a family. And you don't care about anything in the family. Whatever goes, goes. If they say it is raining and water is coming to the house, you still sleep. You don't get up to pick them up. And you see, people who don't care, they don't want to know anything about the church. They themselves won't put their face down to see what is not going on so that I can give myself to them. They don't want to. One minister of God said, once he was serving in a ministry, he became a pastor later. He said he was serving in a ministry. He has studied, he has learned. He wants to be a preacher. He wants to preach in the pulpit too. He was not given chance. And then the pastor, you know the word the pastor gave him, Jonathan. You know what's a Jonathan? The pastor gave him the responsibility of after church, going around in the church, picking things that people have left behind. Sometimes people have drunk, they left it under the chair. People have all things. So God, the pastor gave him cleaning responsibilities in the church. He said he didn't like it. So he did it in a way that the pastor would not like it and take that responsibility from him. He did it on purpose. He, he, anytime he is asked to do the thing, he does it to provoke the pastor. So the pastor will say, don't do it anymore. And honestly, he said he kept on doing that. And one day the pastor said, I don't like the way you do these things. Don't do it anymore. And he said he was happy when he went home. That night, God spoke to him. He said, you want me to use you. You want me to be my servant. You want to start over there. Until you learn this lesson, I'm not going to promote you. Look at how you are doing my work. He said he was shaking. He was sweating. Look at how you disdain my work. I saved you with my precious blood. And look at how you are behaving in my house. He said he went back to the pastor. He pleaded. He asked the pastor to pray for him. The pastor said, I am not the one. Go to the God who spoke to you. And so it out with him. He said after that, nobody told him what to do anymore. In fact, he goes to the church before anybody. Make sure that every chair is in. He said he, 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 he renders service. When he's not in church, everybody will know that he's not in church. The way he started arranging church. He will not see anything dead on the compound of that church and he will not pick it. Finally, God waited for over six years before God told him that go to Sunday school and go and help teach. He wanted to lead the church. He also wanted to be a preacher and preach from the pulpit. And after that, God said go to Sunday school. But because he has learned his lesson, he did it with all his heart. Today, there are many pastors, they have run away from responsibilities that was given them. 
they ran away from it. They didn't do it properly. They have become pastors now. They want people to do it better for them. Forget it. And also church members, as we learn this, when you go home today, sit down and ask yourself, who are you doing it for? You are not doing it for me. It's not me. I'm also rendering my service to God. The beautiful thing about this ministry of help is that as we are faithful in the place where God puts us through the pastor or the ministry where we say it is God who calls us there, it does not mean that we will only do that forever. God is testing you. And as long as you are failing, you won't get anywhere with God. But as I said, in Africa, we don't really care if the nation collapses. So some politicians, this happened in my country, NDC and MPP. There was a time NDC won and all MPP, MPs decided they would sit down and watch them run. They won't contribute. So they will wait till they are dead. This is Africa for you. This is our nature. But if you are a Christian today, you are no longer an African, you are a Christian first. Hello, say amen. amen. We are Christians first. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Everything has become new. You are a citizen of heaven. And ask yourself, how does citizen of heaven do their things? How did they do their things? God calls us into that ministry to promote us as we remain faithful to him. But most of the what we see, we read about Abigail. What Abigail told is her husband, spoke of her husband. We saw how, we have seen how Simon of Cyrene helped Jesus. Now let's go on. The problem we have is people wanting to be at the forefront who are not supposed to be there in the first place. They also want to be like the pastor. They also want to be seen. They want people to see that they are they are also somebody. They can also do it. Wow. I can also preach. I was told a story about a young, a young pastor who went to crusade with a senior pastor. And after they had finished the crusade and they were coming, this young pastor looked at the senior pastor and said, you didn't preach very well. You should have let me preach. So tomorrow when we come to the crusade, let me preach instead of you. <laughs> this happened in Africa. The young pastor told the senior pastor, you didn't preach very well. I would have preached better. So tomorrow, don't preach. Give it to me to preach. I know who the senior pastor is. I know who the young pastor is. Today, the young pastor is nowhere to be seen. Of all his pomp and no better. He shipwrecked his ministry. The senior pastor he spoke to is still going strong. Hallelujah. Listen, the things of God, we learn them. We learn. We learn how to walk with God, how to do the things of God. You avoid the bad things others have done. And you look at the scriptures. So, you be my congregation. I have to teach you these things so that we don't make those same mistakes. King David said, Come, you children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the things of God. The young ones, are you listening to me? There are things I'm doing now. You should set yourself that in the year's time, Reverend will learn this from you so that you will sit down and will come and do it. You don't have to arrange everything and come and preach to us. No. You go ahead and do the preaching. We will do all these things. The boys, young boys in this church, watch me as I do and study me and learn from me. I also learn from other people. That's why I will fix all these things by myself. And God will bless you. I'm teaching the, you the proper way of blessing. There are people crying for blessing, 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 and they are not seeing blessing. Because you do this and you become blessed. Hallelujah. We should do it with joy. We should do it knowing that we are not doing it for any man but the Lord. What we do for the Lord really matters. And therefore we should do it 
cheerfully. Cheerfully. There are people when they are doing something and the pastor calls their attention. Oh, I don't like it this way. Let's do it this way. Take your thing. Sometimes they will tell you take your things, but that's the last time you will see them. They won't come near it again. They don't regard you, the pastor, as a man of God, and they don't regard God who has given them that responsibility. Wow. We have made so many mistakes, and many of us have made so many mistakes. Maybe you might be listening to me, and you find yourself in this mistake. Go and correct it, and God will be with you. Hallelujah. I speak the truth. I will not dilute it. So many of us are doing the things of God wrongly, with a wrong attitude. Colossians 3.17. Colossians 3 17 on the board. It says, Whatsoever you do in words or deeds, do all for the glory of God. Ask yourself, What are you doing for the glory of God? It says, Words, not only in words, but in deeds. The gift of helps mostly is no words. The gift of helps, the gift of helps in the church are mostly not in words, but in deeds. When you do things for God, do you go knowing that you are giving it all and you know God is pleased with it? This, we are not taught. We are not taught how to do the things of our brother. So we are playing in Tokong Road, you know what in Tokong Road. We are playing children game with the things of God. And even though we go to all nights, we go to prayer meeting, we go to fasting and prayer meeting. Yes, yesterday somebody was telling me that when you come to Ghana Sunday, and after Sunday, Monday to Saturday, you look at the nation, you ask yourself, do we really, really know God? Do we know, really know what we are doing? Because these same people who crowd and fill churches between Monday to Saturday, they are different people. Righteousness builds a nation. How can we have so many church goers in the nation and the nation is collapsing? We don't know what we are doing. We don't know what we are saying. Are you helping a ministry? Are you helping the work of God somewhere? How are you doing it? Are you giving your all or you think you are doing it for the pastor? So, if the pastor has annoyed you or you feel offended with the pastor, you decide, I'm out. I'm not going to do it anymore. Oh, my brother, my sister, are you so blind that you have taken your eyes off God and now you have placed it on the man? Colossians 3 17 says, Whatsoever you do in words or in deed, do all for the glory of God. Ask yourself what you are doing. Would it glorify God? Would it give glory to God? Will God be happy? Because God reads your heart. What you are doing, it came from your heart. In words and in deeds. And we say, actions speak louder than words. Action speaks louder than words. So with the gift of heads, we need to exercise them for the glory of God, realizing we are doing it for the Lord and not for a church, a ministry, or a pastor. And whatever we do for the Lord, he wants us to do it joyfully as service unto him and not anybody. We want God to bless us and make everything work good for us. Yet we have a resentful attitude towards his work. Son, you can cut. Stop the live recording and post it. Please, I'm speaking to you as God's children. That's why I want him to come off the social media. And let's analyze ourselves. Let's turn things around. Let us put this correctly. Let us change our habits and behaviors and things. Because it offends God. 
If we don't give God our best, it offends Him. In the Old Testament, we read of a guy called 